Hey everyone, my name is Nona Jones. I wear many hats, one of which is I lead faith partnerships at Facebook, and I also pastor a local church in Florida with my husband. I'm an author, I'm a speaker, and I'm so excited and honored to get to share the word of God with you today. This verse in particular means so much to me. It's out of the book of John, chapter 15, verse two, and it says, he cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. Have you ever pruned a tree before or even branches? For those of us who have, it's pretty straightforward process, right? I mean, you take some clippers or some pruning shears and you just go to work, right? It's not that complicated. But I want you to take a step back and think about that process for a moment. You clip away the parts that aren't healthy, so the healthy part of the tree has more room to grow. But I want you to change your perspective from that of the pruder to that of the tree. And follow me with this for a moment. Imagine you're standing tall but immovable as a tree, all right? And someone walks toward you with these huge, shiny, sharp tools, and then they begin to cut off parts of you. If I was that tree, I would be horrified. I would be mortified. I would be absolutely terrified. I would scream and I would cry and I would beg them to stop. But this verse tells us that the pain of pruning is a reward for fruitfulness. Wait, what? Wait, let me make sure I understand this. You're telling me that pain is a reward? You see, if you look closely at this verse, it tells us that we will have pain whether we are productive or not. If not, the entire branch will actually be cut off. But if we are productive, our branch will be pruned. How interesting then that God uses the same tools either way, but the difference is the outcome. When the dust settles, the question is, will you have been cut off or will you have been pruned? There is a pain to stay the same and there is a pain to grow. So the question for us is, which pain will we choose? Grow.
when the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him. Then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory, and before him shall be gathered all nations, and he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was anhungered, and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee and hungered, and fed thee, or thirsty, and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger, and took thee in, or naked, and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick, or in prison, and came unto thee? And the king shall answer and say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was anhungered, and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty, and ye gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and ye took me not in. Naked, and ye clothed me not. Sick, and in prison, and ye visited me not. Then shall they also answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee an hungered, or a thirst, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into life eternal. I was given a reed like a measuring rod, and was told, Go and measure the temple of God and the altar with its worshippers. But exclude the outer court, do not measure it, because it has been given to the Gentiles. They will trample on the holy city for forty-two months, and I will appoint my two witnesses, and they will prophesy for one thousand two hundred sixty days, clothed in sackcloth. They are the two olive trees and the two lampstands, and they stand before the Lord of the earth. If anyone tries to harm them, fire comes from their mouths and devours their enemies. This is how anyone who wants to harm them must die. Their power to shut up the heavens so that it will not rain during the time they are prophesying, and their power to turn the waters into blood, and to strike the earth with every kind of plague as often as they want. Now when they have finished their testimony, the beast that comes up from the abyss will attack them and overpower and kill them. Their bodies will lie in the public square of the great city which is figuratively called Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. For three and a half days some from every people, tribe, language, and nation will gaze on their bodies and refuse them burial. The inhabitants of the earth will gloat over them and will celebrate by sending each other gifts because these two prophets had tormented those who live on the earth. But after the three and a half days the breath of life from God entered them, and they stood on their feet, and terror struck those who saw them. Then they heard a loud voice from heaven saying to them, Come up here. And they went up to heaven in a cloud 
while their enemies looked on. At that very hour there was a severe earthquake, and a tenth of the city collapsed. Seven thousand people were killed in the earthquake, and the survivors were terrified and gave glory to the God of heaven. The second woe has passed. The third woe is coming soon. The seventh angel sounded his trumpet, and there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become the kingdom of our Lord and of his Messiah, and he will reign forever and ever. And the twenty-four elders who were seated on their thrones before God fell on their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks to you, Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was, because you have taken your great power and have begun to reign. The nations were angry, and your wrath has come. The time has come for judging the dead and for rewarding your servants, the prophets, and your people who revere your name, both great and small, and for destroying those who destroy the earth. Then God's temple in heaven was opened, and within his temple was seen the ark of his covenant, and there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder, an earthquake, and a severe hailstorm.